Well, hello, hello, and thanks for joining me here on this absolutely gorgeous summer day. Well, where are we today? We're down in Surrey. Uh, we're on a big pit, and our target species today is going to be tench and cruisins. However, cruisins are sort of posing a bit hard to find at the moment. So uh, I've had a week off work, and um, I've spent four days down here. Uh, first day, I uh, got down here, and uh, I've had about six tench, uh, and a common of about 16.4. I uh, caught that on a maggot feeder, uh, and that was on a, was a five pound hook leg. That gave me a lot of run around. I had that on for about 15 minutes. Uh, really long common, uh, nice to have. Um, no crusions, uh, so loads of tench. Second day came down, um, and we had about eight tench, uh, up to about, I think it was about six pound was the best tench then. Um, one trout which is a bit strange really, but talking to the bailiffs and that, apparently they've put loads of trout in, there's no predators in this lake and the biosystem's really good, uh, loads of small fry. So what they've decided to do is to keep the small fry down is to put all these trout in, uh, which is strange seeing all these trout jumping out on the uh, on the lake. So um, yeah, I managed to get this trout, I'll show you a photo of that, um, which was strange, no cruisions. So yesterday I came down, day number three, um, I was going to film and uh, I, I decided not to in that because um, there's a lot of effort goes into sort of this sort of filming and I thought oh, well, I'll just take it easy and I'll do the filming today instead but so I didn't decide to film comes down and then um, I've been fishing out I started wading myself through all the tench again I had 13 tench all between the day and then bang it happens I actually uh, I'm, I found the cruisions was really good um, first cruising PB goes two pounds 13 ounces absolutely made up uh, that was my first fish uh, then my second fish bang new PB uh, that was uh, three pound one ounce absolutely over the moon made up uh, and then third cruision and that went three pounds so two th two threes and a near enough three it was absolutely brilliant so it was a species that I wanted to target um, I've been meaning to target the cruisions now for about whew, three years um, and like I say I thought I'd just get down here and really have a good old go and uh, like I say after three days I managed to catch my target species so uh, yeah that was a right result um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, obviously I'm gonna film today see how we get on I'm sure we'll catch plenty of tench uh, hopefully we can find some cruisions however they can they are a bit hard to find on here so uh, not promising anything but you never know keep your fingers crossed so right I'm going to stop waffling now, get my kit out and uh, get this sorted, so I'll see you in a bit, toodaloo. Right folks, good news is, I'm back in the swim I was in yesterday, so hopefully if the fish are still there, uh, I'll be good, so I'm all marked up, uh, I know the distances, I know what's out in front of me, um, and uh, yeah, so all's looking good for uh, some bites, hopefully we might be able to find those uh, cruisins, I'm sure like I said we'll be able to find the tench, uh, get some good footage on there, and what I'm going to do is uh, show you the tactics uh, and the kit on how I go about catching them, so hopefully it's all useful to you so uh, right keep watching right Rob Weiss today I got a one and a half pound test curve barbel rod actually I quite like to use the, the barbel rod it's quite a through action rod uh, 12 foot um, two of those on the bite alarms uh, real wise uh, I got some Shimano 510s and that's loaded up with uh, nine pound line because there are, there are some big carp in here as I told you earlier I had that 16 so uh, you do want something with a little bit of grunt that you might have to uh, back up on so uh, you know for bringing in some big carp so that's what I got there uh, and then going down to my hook length uh, I've got a small piece of uh, leg cord down to uh, a method feeder a fish a method feeder and uh, that's uh, Obviously free run in there, but it's just got a little bit, of, it comes off very easily. So there is a little bit of resistance there, so it sort of gives you that sort of bolt rig effect. Uh, 
and I'm going fake, fake all the way today. So I've got some a couple of little fake grubs on there, two little fake casters on a very small, I think it's a size 12 barbless hooks. That's the rules on this lake. Uh, and on the other rod, I'm going to go. I'm going to use this uh, this cone system, which I'll show you a little bit later. On there, very similar, same rod, same line. Everything else is all the same, just that the uh, the end tackles are a little bit different. I'll show you that. Uh, I'll show you how to uh, make the uh, ground bait mix up now. Right, time to mix some ground bait, and I like to do this prior to setting everything else up, so uh, it's all the waters are sort of going into the ground bait and making that ready for you to fish. So what you want to do is just get yourself a good quality ground bait, you have to mix. Um, you don't need a lot in there. I see I'm only using this little cone system and the uh, little method uh, feeder, so I'm not going to use a lot today. Um, so what I like to do, rather than just put lake water in, um, I like to get myself some liquid additives, uh, put them in a jar, and then get the lake water, put that in there, 50-50 mix, and then uh, keep that with you all day, and then you can top that up because it is going to go, uh, it's going to go dry through the day, especially today with the sunshine. So, uh, as I said before, you don't need a lot of water. A little bit of water goes a long way, so just keep mixing that up till it's. Uh, like I showed you when we were doing the uh, barbel video, just uh, enough so it's just uh, tacky really. Uh, what it will do, it will ball up. So uh, what I have done is brought a riddle. What I like to do is, once I've got that sort of ready, is to uh, put that through the riddle. Which, uh, I'll find that in a sec. I'll show you how that comes out. That makes it really nice and fluffy then. And then we've got these big lumps. In it. We've left that for five minutes. And as you can see, it's got quite a few lumps in it. Uh, but you don't really want that. Uh, some of the areas, it's got a bit more water and flavours than others. So uh, just give that a light mix. So what we want to do is get yourself uh, one of these maggot riddles. Uh, which you put in handy actually. So uh, I'll tip that out. Put it over your bowl. Just aggravate that, stir that in, and then all the finer parts is going to go through the mesh and make that really sort of nice and fluffy. Put the air in that actually, and that's what you want. So uh, keep that going, and then uh, hopefully that'll sort out all the lumps. And you can see all those lumps there, and that's the bits you don't want. So uh, don't throw that in the hedge or just throw it in the side there because uh, a lot of these uh, lakes are sort of having problems with rats and things like that. So uh, I'm going to put that in a bag and uh, take that home and feed it to the birds on the bird table actually when I get home. So, uh, right. So what we've got now, we've got a nice fluffy mix there. Yeah. It sort of holds quite well. And when that goes in the water, as you can see, that's going to break down nice and that's going to be perfect on those uh, method feeders. So rod number two, slightly different on the uh, end tackle. So once again, uh, I've got a short length of about a foot of uh, lead coil there. Uh, I like that, that just sort of sinks it down, just holds it sort of flat on the bottom, which is nice. Uh, and then that's going down to a, a two ounce uh, square inline lead. Uh, and that's sort of semi-fit, as you can see that comes out. It's very similar to the other rig. Um, free running, so if you do get a crack off or anything like that, um, you get snapped up, uh, the fish isn't going to be tethered, uh, safety at all times, uh, and that can break away. So uh, then I've got a small sort of tail rubber in there which sort of grips up, which is quite nice. Um, I've got that down to uh, these little clips, as you can see there. And then uh, look, I've just got a small piece of braid, same as the other thing. And once again, on the fakes, uh, a little small piece of fake corn, the smallest bit of fake corn you can imagine on a size 12 barbless once again. Um, that little, well, I think they're called snap, snap links, slap, slap, snap clips, something like that. <laughs> Sprung in there, won't we? Right, so that comes off very easily. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, you just thread that back there and then that hooks back in there and then you just clip that back on like so. All will come apparent very soon why we do that. So right that's number two. Uh, I'll show you how to bake this one up something a little bit different and uh, a method that I've had a lot of success with. So right I'm going to detach your 
hook length, as you can see there, all detached. Right. These are little guru cone systems. You get yourself a little bait and needle. You get a cone system like that. I think they come in three sizes. Uh, this is the largest size you do. Put that in your mix. You squeeze that both ends like so. Squeeze that in so that you're compressing your ground bait method mix in. And you get your little bait and needle. You push that through like so. And what you do is you pull your hook length right through that. And what you do then is actually pull that right through and actually embed your hook bait actually into that mix. So then you pop that out and you've got a lovely little cone's worth of bait. Not too much, good for not introducing too much bait on sort of shy feeding fish. So. Uh, that go out, imagine that I hit the bottom of the lake and uh, then the fish are going to come in and they're all going to start attacking that that all breaks down and your bait, so once that's broke down like that because your bait's actually in the middle of that which is lovely and then the fish come in there and bang, hopefully you've got to get yourself a nice uh, fish so yeah this is a, it's a great method for just introducing small amounts of bait into a swim So then, reattach your hook length, making sure that you take your cone off, because I've done that, if I had a pound for every time I've left that on there, not cast it out, but <laughs> I've realised I've left it on there, I have to remove it last thing, so, uh, right, put it through your clip, as you can see, those, those clips are brilliant, they're so quick and easy to attach, so uh, there we go, that's ready to uh, go out and just swim and uh, hopefully catch us some potential or one of those elusive cruisers. Right, let's load this uh, flat feeder up. So, uh, right, a little bit of a uh, brown bait in there. I like to, uh, I don't like to actually put the, the grubs actually into the bait mix. I like to leave that sort of tailing out about an inch or so. Fill that in, up to a nice level. Bring in the flat feeder, gently push that down. Pressure that, and then pull that out. Just finish it off, just to do it a little bit extra. And that's the finished article, and uh, here we go. Right, what is important is making sure you're accurate casting every time. So what I tend to do is to employ two old bank sticks, and what I do is I put these apart about six foot apart. And what I tend to do is I use these as my marker sticks. Um, so not your usual 12 foot, like a lot of carp anglers do. Uh, because uh, some of the swims, uh, especially on this lake, are very sort of small uh, and very restricted. So uh, if you're doing like 12 foot, you, you'd have a hard job to do your wraps. So um, I tend to sort of double up then. So uh, I'm doing six foot wraps. And uh, that's quite important. And like I say, I'm just wrapping these up and then just using the line clip uh, to clip up uh, and then cast them out to my spot. So uh, I know how many wraps there. I sort of mark that down in the book keep that sort of there <laughs> ready for uh, next time I come down which has been handy for today because uh, you know I was on the spots yesterday I come down and I, I know how far to cast out so uh, yeah, it's, it's vital that you're you're on those spots all the time so uh, and you're introducing very small little bits of feed so I'm not going to overfeed it today uh, that could kill the swim so uh, I will later on maybe if it does die uh, spawn out some uh, maggots and caster just to see if I get the cruisers interested so uh, yeah very important accuracy is, uh, is going to be uh, number one today. Right, that's everything done. Rods are out, kit sorted. By the way, make sure when you are fishing there you've got your bait runners on because uh, when you do get a tape, they don't have to whiz off, as hopefully you'll see a little bit later. Right, uh, time to get the kettle on and uh, have a nice deserved cup of tea. First fish. As you can see, he puts a good bend in the rod. Uh, this is the tench, definitely. 
I was just decided to uh, get the spawn rod out and spawn some maggot over my right hand rod. Caught me a bit unaware actually this one. About a, uh, a nice scrap up actually. As you can see, we've done our thing on. Fighting like a tench. Yeah. Like I say, one and a half pound Tesco barbel rods, and they're quite a through action. So, as you can see, they have a nice action, nice way to play a fish. Yeah, nice tension actually. Right, landing there. As you can see, I wasn't very prepared for this one. Right. Got right old fight up. So I just love this tench fishing in the summer. It's so strong. And hold on. No. Right. That's the first one in the net. Let's get the other back up ready and I'll show you in a bit of detail. As I was saying, uh, to catch these cruisers, you've uh, Got to go for a few tench. Uh, this is a lovely, lovely green male tench. I'm not going to weigh it. We're looking at about what's that, four and a half pound. Look at that absolute summer glory. Beautiful tench. Let's say it's a male fish. Gave up right old scrap that. And that one was on the, uh, yeah, that was the uh, inline. Bolt rig. So, uh, right. Thank you very much. Right. Well, uh, the weather sort of changed. As soon as we got here, it got really hot, if I'm honest, and um, sort of scuppered our chances of uh, sort of having a decent day's fishing. So, uh, you know, that's the second fish I've had in about four hours. So, uh, really quiet. Um, so what I did do is I, I sort of noticed that there was some fish rising further out. So uh, I'm now going out longer um, and I'm going to try that. Uh, like I say, it's been hot today. I'm not expecting anything until uh, I'll probably give it a couple more hours actually before it sort of turns on. And hopefully we can uh, start picking some fish up as the evening gets in um, and things cool down a little bit. So uh, yes, yeah, so fingers crossed uh, we might be able to do something there. It's definitely the biggest tench of the day. Oh, that's a nice fish actually. Right. Well, like I said, uh, definitely the biggest tench of the day. I think anybody would be happy with that. Right, let's see. A bit close, there you go. Look at that. That's a nice, uh, one of the more yellow tench rather than the real sort of dark green. But um, what's that? Oh, phew, I think that's about six pound. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely the biggest of the day. Good morning. Well, the eagle eyed amongst you will notice uh, it's another day. Day two. Uh, had a great day yesterday, all those tench. Um, no cruisers, uh, as I said to you before, they, uh, are, they are quite hard to find. So, um, what I thought I'd do is film a second day uh, to see if we can bag ourselves one of them nice cruisers. Uh, we're going to deploy exactly the same tactics today. 
uh, as we did yesterday. Uh, only addition is uh, I've got some dead maggots. I'm going to spawn them out. Uh, fishing a different swim. I've uh, got lily pads in this swim, which I'll show you a bit later, um, which hopefully is uh, holding near some of the crusions. Uh, so uh, I'm going to spawn these out and uh, see what we get on today. Hopefully, we might be able to catch one of them crusions. I'm sure we'll catch some more tench. Right, see you in a bit. We're back on the tench. So, ladies and gentlemen, just had a tench. Uh, whilst I was photographing that and returning that, uh, I just had a belter on my left hand rod. And guess what? We got ourselves a crucian. That looks a good crucian as well. Uh, now, my PB is uh, £3 one ounce. Don't think this is quite going to do it actually, but it could be a three. So, uh, right, let's get it out and let's have a look. Oh, it is a. Was a cracking fish, actually. Well made up. Oh, yes. Right. Let's weigh it first, then I'll show you the fish in all its glory. So, zero the scales. Let's see what our little bar of gold is going to go. I'll keep you in suspense, I won't let you see the fish until I've actually weighed it, so... Right, here we go. <laughs> £2.13. Uh, not quite a three. Alright. Just show you. There we go. I just, uh, one sec. There you go, £2.13 ounces. Pure gold. That's what we came for. None yesterday. Seven tench. And uh, I know we got our first cruisings. Uh, absolutely prehistoric looking. Uh, right, let's get this one back. Hopefully, we'll have a few more. So what a cracking fish that was, absolutely well made up over that. And I'm so glad I got it on film for you guys to uh, see. Pit we didn't get the take, uh, I was busy putting the other tanks back. But anyway, we got one and that's the main thing and I got it on film for you. Anyway, it's been a bit quiet, so um, I had to spruce things up a little bit. So I just had a little bit of a change round. So uh, I've made myself a small, um, a new rig, uh, and I've got away from the caster, as you know, I was on the caster. And what I've got now is two fake maggot on a hair rig, on a size, uh, what's that, size 12, uh, guiding a talon hook. And uh, we've got some really heavy braid, uh, and that's the, uh, that's the called a dark matter in the 20 pound, and that's quite heavy, so that's gonna hog the bottom. And that's what I'm trying to do is to try and get that on the bottom. But these are sort of semi sort of buoyant, so they're just off the bottom there. This is a bit of debris out there. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's actually induced the, uh, the crucian to, to take the, uh, the bait because I've got all those dead maggots out there. And you can imagine they're sitting there. And they look like, two, like the dead maggots as well. So, uh, yeah, didn't want the caster. Definitely wanted the maggots. Right, got to get this back out there and see if we can get maybe a three. You never know. <laughs> a bit greedy now. Right, it's uh, half eight, and uh, didn't think we was going to catch another one, so uh, got ourselves another cruise. And I uh, don't think it's quite as big. Uh, uh, more scales, <laughs> didn't want to work. Right, let's have a look at there. Truth. Second cruising of the day. Oh, three pounds, three pounds three ounces. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's a that's a new PB. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yes. Well, 
looking at all the other ones I've had, I didn't expect that. I expected that to be a bit smaller. So there she is. Three pounds, three ounces. So new PB for me. Yeah. Fantastic, look at that. Prehistoric looking fish. Uh, golden colours with those red fins. There's nothing more prettier than that. Well, not in my eyes anyway. Three three. That's three threes I've had. And uh, two uh, uh, two pound thirteen. So wow, I'm well made up. Right. Let's put her back to rest and uh, I'll show you in a little bit more detail. Look at that, absolutely perfection. Beautiful fins, that is absolutely an A1 condition. Lovely lateral line down here. Got a big rudder actually for a small fish. And they tend to, uh, they don't fight really hard until you get them right in close. Uh, oh, look at that, that absolutely gorgeous. Uh, yeah. I'll put scales there so you can actually put uh, into perspective on how big that is actually. Uh, there you go. Brilliant. Uh, the end of a great session and uh, we can't finish with a, a brace of tench. After all those tench we've been uh, wading through to catch those cruisians. Ironic that I can't catch two on their last knockings. So, uh, right, uh, it's been a really good session. I've really enjoyed making this one. It's been great to catch those uh, two cruisians for you, which I want to come back and show you today. Uh, one being my PB, which absolutely, I'm really made up with that. That's, uh, that's absolutely great especially to get it on camera for you guys so uh, but um right nothing more for me to say and uh thanks very much for watching and uh hope the tactics have uh shown you how to go about catching these and uh, you can deploy them in your fishing so uh please like my video please subscribe and i'll see you soon tie lines